Welcome to this BTV Right Now update as we get you ready for Super Bowl 52, which is going to take place on Sunday at 625 between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots. Now, of course, with the big game coming up, big performances are coming up from local businesses from around our area. If you went to the send-off rally at Gillette Stadium on Monday, then you may have seen this monster of a cake made by Montilio's in Brockton. A 16 by 12 foot Boston cream pie with, of course, the five Lombardi trophies that the Patriots have won. The bakery served nearly 4,000 people, and the cake, which consisted of over 400 pounds of sugar, came in at an overall weight of 1,000 pounds. Super Bowl Sunday is almost here, even if you're not the biggest football fan on the block. According to Dr. Scott B. of the Cleveland Clinic, this big game offers a big time opportunity to help get our minds away from the winter doldrums. We're looking for a little bit of hope or something to break the monotony of uh, short days, winter days, uh, you know, down feelings. And so this is something people look forward to, plan for. There's planning for the food. It excites people. Dr. B says that in addition to helping our mood, the Super Bowl is a bonding experience. When we're done with the holiday season, it can be a bit of a letdown and an event in early February gives us another excuse to get together again with family and friends, which is good for our brain chemistry. And we all know some folks who tune in just for commercials. Dr. B says that advertisers like to play to our emotions, particularly with humor, because our brains like the experience. He says that we will recall events and things when they cause an emotional reaction. This is a big event, so you don't want to be the only one not watching. Dr. B says sometimes we watch so we're in the know for the next day. And if you're having a Super Bowl party or want to show off your Patriots pride, you can end up on BTV. Simply email your photo to jluck at btvaccess.com. BTV is currently in its 30th year, and throughout this year, we'll show you some stories from the past three decades. Starting off, we go back to 1997 as the Patriots, just like this year, beat the Jacksonville Jaguars in the AFC Championship game behind then Bridgewater resident Drew Bledsoe. Drew, of course, was the Patriots starting quarterback from 1993 to 2001. Then he got injured, and as they say, the rest is history. Number 11 was a celebrity here in town, and BTV's Bill Messina went searching for him in 1997 after that conference championship game while also pricing out a trip to the big game in the Big Easy. I received a tip that Drew Bledsoe had been seen at Honeydew Donuts. Have you ever seen uh, Drew Bledsoe? Yes, I have. Around in Bridgewater? Yep. What, uh, can you tell us about that? Um, he just comes into Honeydew, and uh, very nice. I asked him for his autograph, and he did sign it for my grandson. And his dad comes in and gave me his football card. Have you ever seen, ever seen uh, Drew in Bridgewater around no, the I area? Haven't. No, I haven't. No, no. But you're pretty confident the Pats are going to take it. Absolutely. Jambalaya. I had missed Drew Bledsoe, but when he said Jambalaya, it gave me an idea. Okay, Paula, I've been on the hunt for Drew Bledsoe here in Bridgewater. I haven't been able to find him. So what I need to do, I think, is go down to New Orleans. And uh, what could you do for me? Well, we could do a lot of different things. There's packages anywhere from, I think, um, $23 or $2,400 on up. Or you could do it one day. You could go early in the morning for $5.99 and come back. You'll be home around 4 a.m. on Monday morning. Speaking of packages, we have a board that covers, that has every package you can imagine. Some of them we're skeptical of. Um, a few of them you fly into Houston and they're, they're overnighting you in Houston and then busing you out the next day into, um, into New Orleans. You're staying nowhere near New Orleans. You're staying maybe 50 miles out, staying in a hotel. You know, just a lot of transportation. There's very little to be had right in New Orleans. As you saw in that story, it's very difficult to get tickets. Forget about hotel and transportation. We did a little price comparison with those figures from 1997. For one end zone ticket in the Superdome 21 years ago, it cost about $1,100. For a ticket in U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota, the site of this year's game, it'll cost you $3,800, and that's for a nosebleed seat. Now, let's say you hit Powerball, and you can sit on the 50-yard line behind the Patriots bench for the bargain price of about $8,000. And if you want the whole shebang with ticket, hotel, transportation, everything in 1997, it would be about a $2,300 setback. Today, for a ticket and a three-night stay, get ready to pay almost $6,500. Or you can just sit at home, pay $20 bucks for food and drinks. You know, just saying. Switching to weather now, it almost feels like a tradition here in New England after a Super Bowl victory. We get storms. Last year, being in the city for the parade, it was just a mess of rain and snow. And we all remember what happened in 2015 after Malcolm Butler intercepted a pass to win Super Bowl number 4 for New England. Almost 90 inches of snow in a one-month span that we now know as the Snow Blitz. 
Sending over to Chef Bao now. So, Chef, do we have to get bread and milk along with our nachos and buffalo chicken dip? Well, happy Friday, everybody. We're getting ready for the weekend, of course, and we have an active weekend coming up weather-wise. We'll get into that in a second. First, let's talk about what happened here this morning. As we mentioned, we were going to have some snowfall moving in for the morning commute, and we did. Now, the heaviest amounts, of course, were in central and western mass. We had a couple of areas where the snow was enhanced. We kind of thought that would happen. And sure enough, uh, Hubbardston, Massachusetts, the big winner with six inches out in Worcester County. Tall and Connecticut coming in with five. And Wales, Mass, way out in the Berkshires, had five inches as well. Closer to home, Middleborough checking in with about a half an inch. Bridgewater just under an inch. Uh, and that was the general theme as we went through the morning. Now it's time for the big freeze. And that's begun with temperatures dropping about 15 degrees since midnight. Of course, it is Groundhog Day, and Punxsutawney Phil did, in fact, see his shadow this morning and as uh, folklore will tell us that means six more weeks of winter science will also tell us six more weeks of winter as well as we do have some colder air that's been building up in siberia it has now started to bleed over the north pole and be moving down to the united states but the majority of that cold air is actually moving down through the upper midwest and it'll be affecting the plains directly we'll have some bouts with colder breaks here and there but um, I think we'll kind of be, have a lot of change in our atmosphere as we really don't have any blocking high, nothing really locking us in. So it's going to be a changeable pattern as we go through the month of February. Uh, it will be even mild at times. It won't be tropical, nothing like where it was back in 1952. That, of course, was the Groundhog Day storm. It was the earliest tropical storm to ever strike the United States, believe it or not. It was a tropical storm moved across Dave County in South Florida, as a matter of fact, as a uh, strong top tropical storm. And again, that was back in February. So yes, you can get these storms any time of year. It also became a uh, pretty decent nor'easter off the coast up here a long time ago. Let's take a look at the uh, water vapor. And as we kind of get a closer look on that, you can see a few features going on across the country. And I want to direct your attention towards the upper left-hand corner. That's the energy that will eventually become a storm system over the weekend, moving across the country. And there's actually a few features here on the map, and uh, you'll be able to see as we go back to the monitor, we'll show you some of those features. So we have, again, that system that's gonna be diving down across the Northwest. In the meantime, we have some energy moving across the Great Lakes, approaching our area. So there's gonna be a Northern stream and a Southern stream of energy it's kind of unclear whether or not they're ever going to really group up and become one strong storm. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to have several pockets of energy affecting us over the weekend. And uh, because of that, again, we don't have a lot of cold air locked in. So I don't see any blockbuster systems here. But there will be the chance of maybe a little bit of snow, some cold rain mixed in, kind of uh, miserable weather here by the time we get to Sunday night. So here's the map as you look at later on tonight. So we have the uh, cold front that's moved well offshore. We have low pressure that's starting to move down across the northwest. In the meantime, energy is going to be diving down towards Texas. So by the time we get to tomorrow night, you're going to see a new low pressure system start to form here. So that's going to be moving across the south. And again, we will have energy coming across the northern tier. I think that energy across the north will move into New England first. That will happen on Sunday. And then that's going to try to absorb some of this moisture that's moving up from the front. But as that happens, the jet stream starts to also freshen up as the winds start to come at us more from a westerly, southwesterly direction, although it will be on the light side. But again, there's really, you don't see any large high pressure systems off to our east. There's really nothing blocking the pattern. There's really nothing holding in that cold air. And those are the ingredients you look for when you're looking for a big snowstorm around here. Not sure that's in the cards, but we will keep an eye on the weather as we go through the weekend, not only here, but also out towards, of course, Minnesota, where the Super Bowl is happening on Sunday. Now, if you are still traveling towards Minnesota this weekend, want to let you know they will have snowfall coming in on Saturday. So there'll be a moderate snowstorm approaching the Super Bowl venue on Saturday afternoon. So keep that in mind as you are traveling. Some of that moisture will be moving towards our area on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday itself. So we'll have a chance of, again, of some snow maybe breaking out for a little bit Sunday afternoon. If we do get any here in the Bridgewater area, I think that'll start to mix with some cold rain, probably even change over to some rain on Sunday night. None of this, again, appears to be a blockbuster right now. And as we bring up the extended forecast here, you're going to see by the time we get to Monday, a lot of that's going to be gone. We'll have sunshine breaking out here. 
by Monday afternoon, temperatures back near 40 degrees. Tuesday, we will start to cool down again, and there's a chance of another system approaching here by Tuesday night into Wednesday. A lot of question marks with that right now. It's five days away. We're not going to get super crazy into that just yet. We will keep an eye on it for you and keep you up to date. For now, I'm Jeff Fowler. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Jeff. The Super Bowl is coming up, which means it's time to talk snacks. And we're going to start off with hell of a good dip, which has the ultimate Super Bowl snack aid. This is the No Fumble uh, Fanny Pack. Okay, now this could be handy. The Fanny Pack has three holders, one for your drink, one for your chips, and of course, one for your dip. Now, you might be hungry for more than a bag of chips, so how about a sandwich for Super Bowl 52 with 52 ingredients? Master Chef Ron DeSantis made this monstrosity of a sandwich that measured 9 inches tall, 26 inches long, and 18 inches wide. Some of the ingredients include provolone, Havarti and Gouda cheese, Genoa salami, ham, porchetta, bacon, turkey, pulled pork, uh, hummus, roasted sweet potatoes, spinach, cucumber, artichoke, spinach dip, <laughs> roasted Jeez. peppers, grilled onions, zucchini, peppers, and eggplant, and yes, even Spam. So, do you want to get a 52 layer sandwich? That sounds like uh, a trip to the hospital. That sounds awesome. Yeah, all right, hope you have good health insurance. <laughs> All right, so this is Brian Barra. We're going to bring back Out of Bounds here, a special revitalization of Out of Bounds for one day only here as we get set to only preview. One day. <laughs> I mean, we might be back. Who knows? Maybe the Saucers make the NBA Finals. Get ready Ooh. for Super Bowl 52. <laughs> and, Brian, this is another instance, I think, where the Patriots fans aren't giving the Eagles enough credit here, almost like what happened with the Jaguars. No, you're absolutely right, John. They're, they're not giving the Eagles credit because yeah, I think the big thing is Nick Foles are going against a backup quarterback and – People think that the NFC is a little weaker this year, and of course, right after the uh, AFC and the NFC Championship games, Patriots opened up as an eight-point favorites. Now it's down to four points as of right now, and I think they kind of just look over this team, and go, "Ah, it's just it's the Eagles. There's nothing really to scare you about them. They have a very good defense. I mean, they and they were able to just absolutely manhandle that Vikings defense, which is a legitimate defense, but." And, and the Patriots have never been a part of a blowout Super Bowl in which they were the victors. They've been part say, of a they were the couple before. They, they've been, you know, the, the one blowout is the '86 with the Bears beat them. But other than that, it's they really haven't been part of a, a blowout Super Bowl. So I don't know why everyone's getting this fake sense of confidence. I know you're going for your second time now in franchise history within the last 20 years, your third Super Bowl in four years, ironically against the Eagles again. But now this isn't this isn't an Eagles team that you should overlook. After all, they are in the Super Bowl. And you look at some of the key players here, uh, starting off with Jay Ajayi, the midseason acquisition from the Miami Dolphins. Ajayi with Philadelphia, 103 carries, 535 yards, and a touchdown. Talking about Nick Foles since the Carson Wentz injury, 102 of 160, just over 1,000 yards passing and eight touchdowns. To me, this uh, Eagles offense is going to give this Patriots defense a lot of issues. Uh, looking at the pass defense, the Philadelphia Eagles rank 18th in pass defense. They've allowed just under 4,000 yards passing. The New England Patriots are dead last in the NFL in their pass defense, allowing just over 4,300 yards this season. And in the rushing defense, which we're, this is where I think the Patriots could lose this game. Uh, Philadelphia ranks first in rushing defense. Meanwhile, the Patriots rank 20th in uh, Russian defense here. So I think the ground and pound attack is going to be what gives Philadelphia the advantage. Well, we thought that that was going to be the case against Jacksonville, and they pretty much went all out to stop Leonard Fournette, and they make Blake Bortles beat the Patriots. And he had a pretty good game, but then again, a lot of his passes were just dump-offs in the, in the flat or dump-offs in the backfield and these quick little routes that were maybe five yards you know, ahead of Blake Bortles. So you, you really, you, I don't think you're really going to see much from Nick Foles trying to go deep, even though that, that was the Patriots' weakness earlier in the year. And, Teams really haven't tried to do that, you know, as of late against the Patriots defense. So, I mean, if you're going to try and use J.H.I., J. who has some familiarity with the Patriots, as he did play with the Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. so he understands that defense a little bit. So that that is something you're going to have to watch out for. But I think if you're going to run the ball a bunch with J.H.I., J., you're still not going to win this game. The Patriots are a bend but don't break defense. So it's what are the Eagles going to be able to do in the red zone that's really going to separate, you know, if the Eagles can really contend for the Super Bowl or actually win it. Now, there's one interesting factor into this game that I think a lot of Patriots fans had to watch out for with those stats I just read off about the rushing defense. That's um, LeGarrette Blunt, the former New England Patriot. And he's not going to go off for 150 yards on 30 carries, but he's going to be in there for the third and goal situation from the two, from the three. That's where I think he's most dangerous. And that's where I think the Patriots, if they don't have Allen Branch, that's going to be where they miss. That's going to be where they miss. 
Allen Branch the most. And LeGarrette Blunt, who also, like Jay Ajayi, is very familiar with this Patriots defense. He knows what scheme they want to run. And even on the offensive side, he knows what the Patriots are going to do. Now I get the Patriots are going to change up a lot so that LeGarrette Blunt's really not going to know much. But he's going to know enough so that the Philadelphia Eagles have a little bit of an advantage. But you're right, John. You make up a good point. I mean, it's also that... That, that mental factor that LeGarrette Blount has. You know, this team gave up on him. They didn't really care for LeGarrette Blount because they brought in Gillisley and, and Burkhead and, you know, everyone else under the sun. And they, he, he's going to have a little bit of that swagger to play against the New England Patriots. So there's been a lot of talk about the Patriots over the past few weeks, ever since that wretched ESPN article came out uh, about the discontent between Bob Kraft, Bill Belichick, and uh, Tom Brady. So after this game, win or lose, we know... Josh McDaniels is most likely going to uh, Indianapolis. We know uh, Matt Patricia's uh, going to the Detroit Lions. After this game, is that holy trifecta of football, Kraft, Belichick, and Brady, are they going to make it to 2018? I think they are. I mean, back after the Patriots beat the Eagles in the 2004 Super Bowl, you lost Romeo Cornell and Charlie Weiss, and you said, and the Patriots hadn't won uh, until Super Bowl 49. After that, and you sit there and you go, all right, well, it's going to be a trying out process. Probably Brian Flores is going to take over for the defensive coordinator position. Really don't know who's going to take over in the offensive coordinator position there for the Patriots as of right now, but. You know, it's going to be interesting, but I think that's one of those things that's in the back of their head, but it's let's not look ahead to it. Let's focus on Super Bowl 52. But as you did mention, you know, we know win or loss, that is something you're going to have to worry about. And now that, you know, Jacoby Brissett's gone and Jimmy Garoppolo is gone, it's Tom Brady cannot retire right now. That's not an option. And if he does, he looks like the biggest jerk in New England. He doesn't care, though. He has a Tom versus time, though. Yeah, he does have Tom versus time, but... If he really does not have that option of leaving, I don't think Belichick has that option of leaving. I don't think Kraft, well, I, I, obviously he's not going to leave, but I don't think he has an option to really look for anyone else because if those guys leave, you can really look at Bill Belichick and go, this guy single-handedly dismantled this franchise and they just skipped down. I, I don't think that that's really that much of an option. I have a sneaky feeling that this is going to be a very ugly offseason as far as that story is concerned. You're probably right. Now, when we talk about the Super Bowl, there's some fun things about the Super Bowl. You have the commercials. You have the snacks. I just mentioned the 52-layer sandwich that I'm probably going to go make after the show. Okay. But, of course, we have uh, the prop bets here. Yes, the, and, the uh, classics. We have some examples of what you can bet on if you talk to Joey the Fish, your booker or something. Bookie, not yes. the booker. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so let's start off with the easy ones here. Uh, Pink's going to be singing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. uh, she likes to change her hairstyle and hair color a lot. Naturally. So um, we have some options here. What color will Pink's hair be for the national anthem? Before you, uh, before you, before you make the answers, okay. I'm going to double down here. I think it's going to be like a bleach blonde. That's what I think. Is that one of the options? That is the, that's the second favorite right second now. Second favorite. What's first? Blonde. Uh, pink and red. Pink and red. Mm, I'm going to go make with. Sense, pink. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still going to go with the light blonde. Uh, so, another one here. What color will Bill Belichick's shirt be at kickoff? At kickoff? Blue, does... gray, red, or white? Hmm. I don't think he's going to go with the red because he wore that in the 2007 Super Bowl. That's that got canceled. It you. got canceled. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go with, it's probably going to be that navy blue. Uh, I'm going I'm to go gray on this one. Gray? Okay. Gray's the favorite, or one of the favorites, three to two. So, um, I mean, there's everything you can uh, prop bet on here, but... Let's start. Let's go ahead to the uh, color for the Gatorade during the Gatorade bath. Mm. Philadelphia, New England, it doesn't matter who's going to win. What color Gatorade is getting spilled after the Super Bowl? You know, that's a very good question. Uh, you, my, my initial instinct reaction is going to be yellow, which is the lemon-lime flavor, the original Gatorade. But I'm going to go with red. That's my guess is red. It shows up better on the white uniform if the Patriots win. I mean, I'm going to go blue, I think. I'm going to throw okay. some curveballs here. So that, those are some of the prop bets. Now the big one here. Who wins Super Bowl 52 and why? I'm going to go with the Patriots are going to win 35-27. to 27. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I think both defenses are really going to struggle, especially early on. And it's going to be – you're going to see more scoring in the latter part of the game because the interesting stat here – and I, when I saw this, I can't believe this is true, but in the Brady-Belichick era, the Patriots have never scored in the first quarter of a Super Bowl. Really? Never have scored. That's a fun fact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of go with the high-scoring game like you are here. I'm going to go a little bit closer here. 34 to 30. I think that this is going to be a real drag out game. Like I mentioned, the battle of the trenches here. I think Philadelphia is going to have the edge as far as the defensive side of the ball goes. But you can't really bet against Tom Brady and the Patriot Magic. They find a way to win these Super Bowls. Absolutely. But, I mean, they don't make it easy. You can't just have a two score no. differential. No. You have to have a heart attack until 10 30. Well, that's where you get the ratings, John. All right, that'll do it for this BTV Right Now update. Brian, thanks for joining me. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you later.